So what's your favorite way of wasting time? I got to tell you, in my life, I've got several. My name is Dan, by the way. I'm with Josh. I'm the teaching one of the teaching pastors at Life Fellowship in suburban Charlotte. Josh is the producer of Life Talk. So Josh, we're talking about socially acceptable sins. One of them that my parents were death on, and I bet your parents were too, because I think we grew up similarly, was <laughs> wasting time. What's your favorite way to waste time? Okay, so lately I'm back on a big Titanic kick. I listened to the history of the Titanic massively as a teenager, and now there's so much more information that's come out, and there's amazing <laughs> YouTube channels, and I just found out, I just played it for the first time yesterday, there is a VR game, I don't have VR, but you can go and explore the depth of no the Titanic, way. the way that it looks right Right now. So I am learning so much about the Titanic and things that I never knew before. And I have sp- I, like hours and hours and hours and hours. Dude, and- that, that, that's odd that you mentioned that. I don't know if we've ever talked about this before, but I, I, as a t- young teenager, I read A Night to Remember. Nice. By, 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 Lord, was that his name, I think? But anyway. No, no, it's a little what, before my time, what, man. Uh, I, know. Oh, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the movie that came out like way before well, Titanic, it was, right? it was a book first, right. yeah. <laughs> but, but, uh, it gave but the movie all came the- out in the 60s, I think. Did it really? <laughs> I think oh, it did. No. <laughs> But that's what that excited my my interest. No good. In the that's great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, that is a, that is an issue. What about to... you? How do you waste uh, time? Yeah, I'm gonna I, guess differently. I, do you, how do you, how do you think? Knowing me, do you think? Um, I'm gonna guess uh, finding people to argue with. Uh, no, <laughs> no, I did do that. You know, remember the early days of AOL chat rooms? Yes, I used to that's do how that I got to know my wife on AIM. Really? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, it's a messenger, I guess, not chat rooms. Yeah. I never did when chat there, When there were chat rooms, I would just get in there and argue until my brains fell out. That's but no, I'm a doom scroller. Are you? I really on am. on on where you, you uh, define you, for the audience what doom scrolling means? Okay, so doom scrolling is <laughs> you you get sucked into an algorithm vortex uh-huh. of of videos or a thread TikTok. or this is like, this uh, yeah, like, I'm, is. I that's the one I have absolutely refused to join is TikTok. Um, I have done this on Reddit. I've done it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. I've done it on Instagram. I've done it on Facebook, and. You, you know, if if I'm like really, I, I I'm insomniac a bit. So like I'll just say, okay, I'm just gonna watch a few YouTube videos, and the next thing you know, seriously, I've done it for as long as three hours. Three hours. <laughs> three hours. On like a topic, do you get like sucked down the rabbit hole? On, yeah, but I'm know. really embarrassed to tell you this because you, you're gonna look at me differently. But like like I'll I'll, I'll look at um like uh um news bloopers. <laughs> Oh, no, those are great. Yeah, well, not three hours worth. We'll do it worth. live. We'll <laughs> do <it> live. <laughs> three hours worth. <laughs> but, you know, so I'm just going to watch just one more, just one more, and and then I, then I do. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about time wasting. By the way, I, I want to make sure we don't come off too legalistic on this. Yeah. Legalistic. Well, legalistic. I've got questions ready to go right, on well, how to turn, avoid legalism I'm going to turn it over to you, but I just be, I want to say this before we do is not – Everything that's not productive is necessarily a waste of time. Yes. Um, I kind of fight with this, uh, oddly, after I've confessed to spending three hours in the middle of the night looking Mm -hmm. at bloopers. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, part of it, I think, sometimes is because... I've always like I feel guilty going vacation. I can't. I, I have a hard time vacationing hmm. because it feels unproductive. Hmm. And yet at the same time, I'm a big hypocrite because I will watch three hours of you know stupid videos. Well, it's like that's when you need to get that time in, right? Like, I guess you got to get and, it. In and you somewhere. know, I think at some point your body says, "I do need to disconnect from yeah. from something too serious." Yeah. You know, I always brag about. Well, I I don't read fiction. I almost never ever read fiction. Me neither. And um, I used to brag about that till one guy looked at me and said, "But you watch TV." <laughs> You know, true. Yeah, and so like oh, yeah, Dan's on YouTube. I right? watch a lot of fiction. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, shoot some questions at me if you would, and let's let's talk about time wasting as a socially acceptable sin. Yeah. Okay. So I'm glad that we're in this series that is now like the m- most convicting thing I've ever been in. <laughs> I'm looking forward to getting back to talking about the big sins that we don't do, so that I can enjoy this podcast sure, series sure. more. But I definitely think I waste a lot of time. So, um, starting with um, why do you believe time waste? is a socially acceptable sin. Like like when you say time wasting, I imagine I'm going to guess that parents probably parent their kids a little bit differently now than they than they did when you were a kid. They did and and you know, I think it's sad there are more options by which we can waste our time today. Yeah. You know, for instance, I grew up in a time um where there, you know, we had 
two television channels if the weather was good. Three, rarely. One, a lot of the time. Um, and then TV was done at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. The hmm. National Anthem came on and it was over. Hmm. After Johnny Carson was done, the TV was off. The National Anthem played every night? Every single night at, uh, I think in our area, it was 11, 30, maybe 12 o'clock. But it was never, it never, in the wee hours of the morning, nothing was on the television. And it'd come back on about six or seven o'clock in the morning. Huh. Um, you know, and, and, so, and, and then I lived in an agrarian part of the world, you know, Midwest. Um, there was work to be done all the yeah. time. There was never a time when you say all the work on the farm is done. There's always a fence to fix, something need to be painted, you know, a garden to be hoed. Yeah. Um, so there was always that pressure, um, just like, why are you laying around? Why are you, yeah. you know? Um, and interestingly, um, even wasting time was not really a waste of time because I loved, I still do, love to read. Hmm. We would we would go to town one day a week, other than for church. We only went to town one day a week. We would go on Friday. Mom would do the grocery shopping and errand running, and she would drop us off at the library. And we would check out the huh. maximum number of books that you could, which at one time it was like 20 books. Yeah. And the way I got punished when I was at home during the week was my mom would take my books away from me. Wow. Because I would I, – and I, sometimes I'd have the books read by Monday, and hmm. and she'd say – Get your nose out of the book. You got chores to do. You know, the, have you fed the cows? Have you, you know, have you done this? And and she said, just if I have to as a kid, he's just like his brain is just like exploding. Yeah. All these neurons are firing. And mom's like, get out there! That's right. And sometimes she would make me leave the house and read outside because she didn't think it was good for me to stay in the house. I was that bad of a bookworm. Wow. Um, but you know, this is why Dan's as smart as he is. Well. I don't know. I'm definitely not smart, but I think it's the reason I write as well as I do because yes. good good readers are good writers, yes. and I, I learned syntax and you know just basic yeah. writing skills from reading good authors. Yeah. But um, you, you know, so but we didn't have video games. We didn't have the internet. Uh, the telephone uh, was a shared line with four other families. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, um, there were not as many options for wasting time. Yeah. But even then, you know, there's the old Protestant work ethic. There's there's just this notion that the devil's or uh, idle time is the devil's workshop. Right. These kinds of uh, colloquial expressions were mm -hmm. very common when I was growing up. And yeah. My grandparents or my parents would would use them as kind of to bludgeon us into productivity. Um, but but uh, so so time wasting today though is a whole different ball game because we've got eighty channels on our TV. We've got yeah. and nobody even watches TV anymore. It's no. internet. Yeah. I, I read the other day that some and some research is showing that kids are in front of screens twelve hours a day. Yep. 12. The most I remember Crazy. for TV was eight, and now it's up to 12. And it increases as they get older, which is interesting. So stop, if you would, be devil's advocate and think, if our kids read half the time that they're in front of a screen, mm -hmm. read a book, what would what might change? If they were, if they were working, developing a skill, something as simple as – I had a friend whose dad would make him take a lawnmower apart and then put it back together just for fun. Take wow. the lawn, the old lawnmower, take it apart, and then put it back to see if you can put it back together again. And that kid became just a you know small engine genius, right? Just from taking a lawnmower apart. But it wasn't, uh, you know, nobody asked you what level did you get on, you know, World of Warcraft or, or you know, right. Grand Theft Auto right. or whatever. Right. So, but then, so then, what do you do with this? I mean, this wasn't where I was going to go next, but like that raises interesting. Like, there's this: the world is so weird now. That there are a lot of young people who can actually say that their job title is YouTuber. Like, they actually make way more money <laughs> yeah. than either of us playing those video games. So then, like, at what, you know what I mean? I, I think at some point, and boy, this is going to be controversial. You have set me <laughs> up, so I'm going to get some hate mail. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> I, I've got to ask if every vocation that we could have is the best choice for someone who believes in eternal truth. Ooh. Okay, go. For instance, go, go, go. For instance. Yeah. Uh, and I've got friends who are models. Yep. I've got friends who are um, influencers. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. We probably see this different. I love them. I care about them. They can make their choices. I'll make my choices. They probably think what I do is a waste of time. But I, I would simply say we never enrolled our kids in in modeling classes. We never we never had them compete. Uh, at a at a skill level, I had a son who could shoot the eyes out of a. Uh, he, he he was a three point shooter, and he was wow. very very good at. It. We never encouraged him to pursue that. 
Um, you say, do you love sports? I like, I like sports. I love sports, particularly NFL football. I'd never aspired for my kids to be professional athletes. Yeah. I don't aspire for them to be professional entertainers. I don't want them to be a model. I want them to have good character and a, and, and a strong intellect. Yeah. I don't want them to be dependent upon the, the lure of fickle worldly values, I guess. Mm -hmm. And that sounded incredibly pious and I don't mean for it to, but if I were to aspire for something for myself or for those I, I love, yeah. I, I want their life to matter when they're over. And you'll never convince me hmm. that sashaying down a, a runway, <laughs> that catching a ball, uh, that that um, you know, that filling a stadium with a bunch of people screaming and hollering at you is necessarily the best use of my life. Yeah. So and yeah. boy, I'm gonna get slammed for that. I just No, I no. I think there's a ton of truth to that. Like we, I mean, we all know that there's exceptions, but everyone mm -hmm. I, I'm obviously there's great you know, it's wonderful that there are some, you know, great pastors and apologists and philosophers that can get a big room, you know, maybe not philosophers, but the rest of them can get a big room full. Like there's there's good times there. But yeah, of course, a lot of the influencer influencer, you know, Instagram mm -hmm. influencer type that's like getting paid a lot of money just to like talk about the things that they're using and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm no, I'm, I, I'm with you. So what would be some other examples of activities that probably feel to most Christians to be harmless, but maybe fall into this socially acceptable sin yeah, category? I, I'm, I'm going to be really blunt. And yeah, again, people good. send me your hate mail. I'm a big boy. I can take it. But I think if you're spending more than an hour a day on video gaming, that you're probably in, in this territory. I do. I think if you're watching more than, you know, the equivalent of a movie on TV per day, that you're probably into the point. A again, understand mm -hmm. this. As believers, mm -hmm. the law has no effect on us. Yeah. Uh, other, uh, uh, I'm sorry, no eternal effect on us in terms of it doesn't damn us. You're not going to hell because you play, right. you know, 27 hours a week video games. But what I'm saying is what is, what is good? What is, you know, Philippians talks about, think on these things, you know, the aspirations that we should be having, how we spend our time, how we reflect on things ought to, ought to be done from a biblical context. Yeah. And I know marriages that are in trouble because mm. the guy can't put the control, con controller down. Mm. I know marriages that are in trouble because the wife watches so many influencers and feels like they have to, they have to, you know, keep up with, the they have Joneses. to keep up with all the people, you yeah. know, they got to go to burn boot camp and then they got to make a, you know, a casserole out of, uh, out of stuff they bought at the dollar store. And then, you know, all these different, everybody's an expert on the internet yeah. and, and, and they feel unworthy and all these people, Young parents who are 22 years old, 28 years old, telling you how to parent, like they're the first generation know, who ever figured it <laughs> out. And some of the stuff they're suggesting is just mind-boggling vacuous. Yeah. And 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 yet a lot of women are saying, oh, I'm not a good mom because I'm not like this. Yeah. You know, and it, it, to me, it's tragic. Yeah. We are allowing ourselves to be altered by the media. So yeah. that would be at the, at the top of my list. But it, I mean, there's so many other things that we do, like idle, idle talk and gossip. I mean, that right. that was probably- That's a different episode yeah. though. Yeah. <laughs> it is. And I mean, it really is. socially like, acceptable thing. But, but so there's, you know, for me, it's a matter of stewardship. Yeah. And I often say, you know, I, several years ago, I went to Monticello and, and saw Thomas Jefferson's place. Mm -hmm. um, Jefferson didn't have a TV. Now, arguably, he, had, he, he <laughs> really, yeah, yeah, he did have. 60, he should have sixty or seventy slaves, which is another whole issue. <laughs> this that, but but he spent his time inventing and writing letters. He had mm -hmm. this, and you can see it at Monticello that he had this machine that he could write four letters at the same time. Uh, it, it, you, you could put four pins oh, on it. I missed that. It, it, I forgot. Yeah, that. it was really really cool, and he could write one, but it'd make three copies for him. Oh, so, that's really cool. And and he invented things, and he thought great thoughts, and his even his books are still there on the shelves. And he would invite guests to spend a week there just so he can engage them in philosophical that's conversations. The life right there. Yeah, and I look at that and I say, how much poorer would the world have been had some of the great philosophers and leaders mm. of, um, and the thinkers that, you know, the founders of, of uh, you know, it used to be people would go down to uh, the local hall, which was the pub, mm -hmm. and they, they would get their news, they would get education there, they would meet travelers, they would find out what the rest of the world was like. Mm -hmm. um, and the person that kept the hall was the stew. 
And they weren't called halls in the old English. They were called wards. So you'd go down to the wards. You could get a room there. You could get a meal. Hmm. You get a pint. You talked. You connected. You learned. You explored. You conducted business. Yeah. All kinds of things there. And it was considered to be an important part. And so much important that it was called the steward, the, the, the head of the hall. Yeah. And when we talk about stewardship, we're talking about the keeper ah. of the hall, the keeper of the central, of the information, of the communication. Hmm. And so when you even look at the, 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 the origin, the English origin uh, etymology of that word, says, says that our idle times can matter and can be good and can be useful. Yeah. Uh, but I think there's just another thing, just uh, simply avoiding laziness. Uh, there's a verse in the Proverbs, you know, a, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands, you know. It's, it's a, a picture of somebody who's just, you know, just kind of always just, you know, just groggy and, and not connected and they're lazy. And and uh, the Bible says, go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. You know, because ants, I've never seen a sleeping ant. <laughs> you know, they're, no. they're moving. So I think there is this idea also, it's, it's avoiding laziness. Okay, so I'm so so going back to video games just for a minute, just so just 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 for the fun of pushing for like a a, 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 a little further on this, and, I, and then I'll, I'll I'll pivot to a, a different direction. But um, so my wife and I have been playing some some co uh cooperative yes, games yes, yeah. together. So uh, I imagine. You're you're gonna be fine if you hear someone's like, "Hey, I almost never get to do this with my wife, but I, we had a couple of hours, and so we played this food truck game, yeah. you know, yeah. like that kind of thing." I I'm gonna say there's and anything can be taken to an excess. Yeah, you know, in my day, people played cards. Yep. Um, there, what was that bridge? Mm -hmm. Nobody plays bridge anymore. But when yeah. I was, I mean, it was in the newspaper, you know, bridge clubs and so. So mm. I think people need recreation. Yeah, and relational time. And, and relational time. Um, my wife and I used to play um, gin mm -hmm. um, while we drove because I had a twenty-two hour drive to Missouri. We play it as we drove. How? Um, yeah, we put line the cards up on the on the <laughs> dashboard. We could like stick them in. It was really okay. But, but I, we we really do need to be mindful of yeah. the moments. Um, um, yeah. And and again, you can be legalistic, but you can also be careless. And I think yeah. somewhere in the middle is a, a golden mean that yeah. allows us to to be able to live with intentionality and yet, you know, not being somebody just who nobody wants to be around them because they don't know how to have fun. Look at, look at the guy who says he's not so smart, quoting Aristotle, going all golden mean <laughs> on us. I like it. Okay. So, then, so, so do you have a sense of... Because I just feel like there's going to be people that's like they want to do the right thing. They want to find the balance. They're going to know that there's going to be extremes on both ends. And they're really trying to discern. Like what would be like maybe some of the most common tricky ones? I, I, there's this quote I heard I, and I can't stop thinking about it. There's, a, there's some CEO. I don't know who it is. But some CEO who's got a company so massive that he says that he, his staff only comes to him for a decision if it is a 51-49 decision. Meaning it is so close. Like – his smartest people cannot figure out which one to go for. Those go to the CEO. So I'm thinking, like, what are the 5149 kinds of, like, you know, for the workaholics that are like, should I rest a little bit? Or but at what point is it too much? Like, yeah. you have so much wisdom. You've been trying to figure this out for so long. Like, what are the kinds of things that you're doing when you're in your best moments? Yeah. Well, and that's the problem. I, here's what we often do, and I'm this way as well. I will abuse abuse myself, my body, my time, my my relationships by work, 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 work. But eventually, it is going to catch up with you. Yes. You know, it's interesting. Yes. There are ten commandments, and if I told you, Josh, man, I, I, you know, I committed adultery last week, you would say, Oh my goodness, Dan, you right. can't do that. You're right. a pastor. You're a Christian. You're. Right. If I said, you know, I have a real problem, man. Everywhere I go, I'm just lying. I'm right. just everywhere I go. It's a commandment. Yeah. But if I told you that I haven't taken a day off in thirty days, you'd say, Whoa, right? Man, that guy's got a right. good work right. ethic. And yet, that's a violation of the the Sabbath principle. Mm -hmm. And and now I'm preaching to myself because I've I've had one day off since January 1st. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 it is wrong. Yeah. And I, I think if you look at your life and you realize you're not even Sabbathing, you're not even taking one out of seven days for yeah. restoration of your yeah. your health, your walk with God, your relationship with others, yeah. that you're you're probably living out of balance. That's a good question. What should modern Sabbathing 
look like? Because obviously neither of us think that we're supposed to leave, you know, animals at the bottom of the wells right. and things like that. Like we're not living in, you know. So but I do think it looks look like? a lot more like the Old Testament than we want to give it credit. Yeah, I yeah. bet it does. So I grew up in a culture, again, very conservative, you know. The whole, yeah. But um, our church, there were people in our church that would not play or watch sports on Sundays. Hmm. Um, my dad refused to work in the fields on Sundays, um, unless, uh, there was a, uh, like a, he had hay down and it was going to rain and it would mm-hmm. ruin the hay. Mm-hmm. And then he would quote that verse of scripture where it says, if your ass is in the ditch, you got to pull it out. And that was the only time, yes. that, you know, my dad yes. would use the word ass. Right. <laughs> he'd say, well, my ass is in the ditch. <laughs> There's also a swapping though. That's I imagine what, yeah, if it's so, going to rain in two days, then maybe he might rest on the No, rain no, night. that no, wasn't no, my dad. Oh, no, <laughs> well, well, the other thing is my dad was bivocational, so, oh, uh, okay. he had to make good use of the time. Yeah. But the, the, the reality is that, um. You know, I I I don't think we're in any danger of being too legalistic when it comes to Sabbathing. Oh, so, that's that's a that's so true. I bet. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's okay to sleep eight hours. It's okay to take a nap on the Sabbath. It's mm. okay to have a fast from television or from video gaming or from the internet. I believe this that if we did a Sabbath, a true Sabbath, yeah. and on that day we turned off our router. Yeah. Does, does everyone know what that means to you? Like when you, we keep on talking about like true Sabbath, like a short, dude, does everyone know what that means? Like what you, what you were supposed to do as a Jewish person during the Sabbath? Is everyone like tracking with that? They, they may not. You want to go ahead and, and explain You weren't something. allowed to do anything. Right. You were supposed to like sit on the couch. Yeah. Like, a lot of the time, I think, right? Like, and I've known people who grew up like Dutch reformed in the old days that, that literally the, the only book they could read was the Bible. They dressed up for the whole day. They weren't even allowed to nap. I mean, they, they could only study. They could only sing hymns. They couldn't listen to the radio or music or TV or anything. I mean, it was very strictly applied. Yeah. And then I think some people got, when they got freed of that, they were like, I'm not Sabbathing, man. That wasn't fun at all. Yeah. I think there's a reasonableness. But honestly, yeah. could anybody argue that if you said, look, I'm going to have one day a week yeah. where I'm going to rest. Yeah. I'm I'm not going to go shopping. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go um, um, spend time on the internet. I'm not going to play video games. But I'm going to spend it with my wife and my kids. I'm going to worship with them together, mm. um, and we're going to make this a family day, a rest day. I'm not mm-hmm. going to mow my grass. I'm not going to do that. I uh, see. I'm old enough to remember this. Um, <laughs> We had blue laws when I was growing up. Are you familiar with blue laws? No. <laughs> Seriously, blue dude. Laws? No. Oh, g- Google it. So blue I know laws. Red line. Red lining is when, what are blue laws? When I was growing up, you could not have your store open except for groceries and gas on Sunday. Those were the only two. And in the grocery aisle, you know, they 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 had aisles that would have alcohol. Those would be blocked off. Uh, in the cooler, they would have like straps across them. Uh, you couldn't buy toys. You couldn't buy clothing. Um, you couldn't buy motor oil. You couldn't buy school supplies on Sundays. You could only buy food and you could only buy fuel and medicines, something like that. Now, as we got older, um, the first step was you couldn't do it until like two o'clock in the afternoon or four o'clock in the afternoon. Then Walmart happened in the early seventies and Walmart went around this country and, and, and fought blue laws as unconstitutional infringement on business. And they, they started dropping, but up until the early seventies, blue laws were all over Midwest, huh. Southern cities, rural towns. And it was the tip of the hat to the idea that one day of the week, what Chick-fil-A does by not yeah. opening, yeah. that was, that was the rule. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and not the exception, um, in, in That's those days. amazing yeah. because, like, I mean, I'll, I'll, and maybe I'm just so wrong about this, but literally, I maybe yesterday or two days ago, I was just talking to someone, just kind of and kind of griping about the fact that there are still places like Georgia where the liquor stores have to be closed on Sundays, which yep. just feels strange to me. There's yes. one county left in North Carolina, Robbins County. My, uh, I had a relative that lived there. Yeah, and it's called a dry county. You cannot buy, you could only buy packaged alcohol there. Yeah. But I, I grew up where, wow. where there was a vote in our city that allowed liquor by the drink. That's what it was called, liquor by the drink. Uh, <laughs> and you could you could go into a – before when you went into a bar, they'd hand you a bottle and a glass and you buy the bottle. And mm-hmm. after that passed, then they could pour the – into the into, – it was weird. Yeah. That's so interesting. So – I guess okay. So okay. So I mean, I'm my mind's blown, and I know I'm forty. So I mean, I just, it's not like and I'm, I'm not that old, by the it's way. Not I like I'm Gen Z, just like what you know, what you know. Um, 
I hear what you're saying in the sense. Well, I'm gonna. I think I'm just gonna try to like verbally process to you, and you react to this, and then we can close. We can close this out. But like, does this mean that maybe we should? Do you think we should? We should go back to more of this. Should there be more Chick Fil A's that close down on Sundays? Should all the liquor stores be closed? Like, am I wrong? Like, yeah. you know, I, here's where I'm on that. Yeah. Um, the good old days weren't always the good old days. First of all. Yeah. Um, I don't entertain those kind of questions. I'm asked them frequently, usually by people of a different political persuasion, persuasion who are trying to uh, convince themselves and others that we want to go back to, to the, the Puritan so. yeah. age or whatever. It's not going to happen. No. It's just simply not no. going to happen. No. So I'm lost. not going to, you know, I don't go down that rabbit hole with people. Yeah. I would just simply say, I do believe we have lost something yeah. by becoming so committed to activity and mm. earning money and being occupied and being busy. We have forgotten the discipline discipline of, of meditation. We have forgotten the joy of rest and we have, and we have lost the ability to connect on a human mm. level that does not involve technology and we're poorer because of mm. it. So, you know, scripture, scriptural principles are not given yeah. to us to keep us from having a good time. Yeah. They're given to us so that we can be healthy yeah. and we can enjoy the life abundantly. Yeah. And I, I think if we lived closer to that, it would be a lot better. Okay, final very quick lightning question. We've been doing, I think, you've done a great job talking about however and listening to this, how we can be thinking about our lives. Let's turn this around a little bit. Pastors are very overworked people, mm -hmm. ministry leaders in general. Mm -hmm. We both don't have a whole lot of rest time right. for similar reasons. What can the church, the body of Christ, do to make it easier for the leadership of this church to follow biblical principles when it comes to wow, rest? How can we try to yeah. optimize your guys' virtue? Well, the, the reality is, is probably not a lot. Hmm. Um, and that's, that's the thing is to live a balanced life, to live a biblical life, you need to learn to do it on your own without everybody supporting you or agreeing with you. Hmm. Um, and so much of my, my workaholism yeah. has been out of a misguided sense of of distorted principles and priorities. Mm. So I'm not going to defend them. And a lot of pastors are that, are that way. Uh, we have quit resting on God and we start thinking that this is our church. It's yeah. not our church. Somebody's yeah. going to be in this this office and in this role and they won't even remember my name or care. Um, and at the same time, in all honesty, I will die sooner than I normally would have had I been in another location because I've abused myself yeah. in ministry yeah. and think and I and and I convince myself and anybody who challenges me on it that well this is just the way it is in ministry or this is God's will or whatever and it's not that's not true. Mm -hmm. I would only add this caveat if I were and I am an elder, but if I were a lay elder, um, I would I would probably hold the vocational elders closely accountable. On, on this issue. Mm. Um, and they'll probably argue and cheat and, and, you know, but I think there ought to at least be some tension that exists yeah. on that because most of us, you know, uh, we want the pastor to take a day off unless we need him on his day off. And then right. we want him available. Right. Um, but we want that with our doctors too. And the yeah. bankers, you ever get yeah. mad at your banker because he's off on a holiday? Yeah. I do. Um, so we, we've got to be really, really careful of our expectations of others. Yeah. Uh, and it comes down to selfishness and self-centeredness yeah. and, um, you know, egotism and all kinds of things, which is why we're talking about yep. socially acceptable sins. Yep. So. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening to us at Life Talks. Uh, we we always enjoy hearing from our readers or listeners. And if you would like to send us a, uh, a question that you'd like to see us address or you have a suggestion for an episode, please do so by call, contacting us at lifetalks at lifecharlotte.com. But thanks again, as always, for listening to us here at Life Talks. Life Talks.